Real talk, as far as the features of the face are concerned, I think lips are absolutely, hands down, the hardest one to draw. And I'm saying this as somebody who's been drawing portraits for like 20 years. So as a part of the Features in Focus series that I'm doing for my Patreon students, I made this video that encapsulates everything that I know about the lips that would be practically important for you to know to draw them just a little bit better. Of course, if you wanna unlock the full in-depth lesson, just follow the link in the description of this video. It'll take you to my Patreon page. You can subscribe and get access to that one and tons of other videos. Before you do that though, let's jump into this condensed lesson on how to draw the lips. Now the lips being a primarily horizontal feature, one of the first things I do to determine their size is to find the endpoints on that left-right axis. In addition to establishing the proportion of the lips, this also helps me understand what the tilt of the lips are. In the drawing that we're going to make today, I would say it's primarily even. However, there's maybe a tiny dip downward on the left-hand side. The next thing I want to do, though, is find the bottom edge of what is called the upper lip tubercle. Now, that's this rounded V-shape that we find in the center of the lips just below the philtrum. This V-shape comes to a point along the central axis of the face, and that helps us determine whether we're looking at the lips from the right side or the left side. I like to find where the lower lip turns in relationship to the plane below it, which leads downward to the protrusion of the chin. The reason I like this as the next landmark is because it is a relatively flat angle, and it establishes a perfectly clear proportion between the bottom of the tubercle and the bottom plane of the lower lip. Now there's a number of different things that we can do with this proportion, but we're gonna hold on to that for later while I establish the next proportional marker, and that is gonna be the bottom of the philtrum. So the philtrum is actually an area just below the bottom plane of the nose, where it meets the front plane of the face. And it's commonly used to refer to this kind of central area where there's an indentation above the upper lip. But in fact, it encompasses an area both to the left and to the right of that initial indentation. As with any drawing, it's really important to take measurements. And I wanna to indicate to you now, one of the things that makes me change the initial proportion I made for the lower lip. So if we take a measurement from the bottom of the tubercle to the bottom edge of the lower lip, and we measure that against the overall width of the lips, we come up with just about a five to one ratio. So when I made this initial mark, that proportion was too small and would have led to a proportional error when I established the entirety of the lips in relationship to their overall height. Despite whatever the shadow and light situation might be in the lips, this horizontal axis to me represents a really key feature inside the drawing of the entirety of the mouth. Eventually, the upper lip will cast a shadow across the lower lip, which will obscure a little bit our view of that horizontal center line and change a little bit the way that we perceive the proportions of the mouth. Because of that, the structural reality of the horizontal center line makes a very crystal clear concrete landmark that we can use to design all of the forms of the lip and not just look at the pattern of light and shadow that happens to run across them. I'm also going to indicate at this point some of the features around the lips. For example, the bottom plane of the nose where it hits the front plane of the face because eventually the lips are all about context. By that I mean it's very easy to draw the lips as if they are a cartoon, a set of outline shapes that are sitting across a flat form on the bottom third of the face. The lips truly come alive when we connect them to the rest of the forms of the face around them. So let's do one more thing. I wanna block in the shape of the upper lip overall before we get to a really, really important feature. The muscle that surrounds and makes up the actual forms of the lips is called orbicularis oris. And at the outside corners of that muscle are what are called the muscular nodes. Now these nodes cause a turning in of value as we get into the outside corner of the mouth. It's responsible for that diagonal half tone that we perceive at the outside corner of the mouth on either side. Another way you can tell that there's a depression in the form occurring here is if we look at something called the vermilion cornice that runs across the edge of the upper lip, but also down the lateral edges of the lower lip. Now the vermilion cornice is just a little raised form that sits above what is called the vermilion border. Now the vermilion border is really just the beginning of the red part of the lips and doesn't represent a significant deviation in form. The vermilion cornice, however, is what causes the highlighted edge that we see here and the highlighted edge that we see here. But watch how this highlight, starting here at the edge of the philtrum, travels out to the outer edge of the lips and then dissipates as it encounters this depression in the form caused by the node. Now the best way to understand the lower lip is to look at it as if it has three sections. There is a central body of the lower lip and then two triangular planes that flank it on the left and right. Now this lower section has two basic rounded forms, which in a very simplified way can start to resemble the form of a peanut. 
Now, while that might sound like a little bit abstract and a little bit weird, it's just a good way to understand what the volumes are so that eventually when we're rendering it in terms of shadow light and halftone, we can better understand what kind of form we're gonna be rendering. Now, in general, the lower lip has a plane shift a little bit higher than most of us seem to expect. You can tell this by the location of the highlight on the lower lip. We usually find it at the upper third and it runs across the form of the body, arcing along with the overall volume of the lower lip. From the central axis of the face, just below the lower lip, and also descending down from the outside corner of the lips, is something called the pillars of the mouth. It's easy to see the lateral form of it here, where it transitions from lighter at the center to darker on the left. Because we see a highlight on that vermilion cornice, we should understand two things. One, the area above it, and two, the area below it, must be darker. So if this is facing upward towards the light, it must mean that the pillar of the mouth here has a downward facing angle. Now the next thing I wanna talk about actually defines the parameters of the roof of the mouth. So the nasal labial fold when lit from above tends to give us this relatively soft half tone, runs down the face in a diagonal and eventually usually combines together with the half tone plane that is turning from the front plane of the cheek to the side plane of the jaw. When we understand that the light is coming from the upper right hand corner, we tend to have a shadow shape that develops. Now, eventually, that upper lip is casting a shadow also across this section of the lower lip, so we want to also include that inside the shadow shape. When we start combining these two shadow shapes together, we risk to lose the true structure of the lips. It's why I like to hold on to that horizontal axis that runs from the outside corner all the way to the other outside corner. Now, we see the same thing on the other side, a shadow shape that is strongest at the outer edge, and in fact, as it approaches that upper lip tubercle, it breaks a little bit further down and then bonds together with a form shadow on the left-hand side of the tubercle. This is where the cast shadow gets much deeper and encompasses a lot more of the lower lip, but there is something it reveals. Remember that peanut volume that I talked about? Look where the angle of that cast shadow changes, right at the edge of the left-hand side of that peanut. In fact, it dips down before it cuts back up to run across that vermilion cornice. The same thing that's causing a highlight on this side is causing a deviation in the shape of the shadow edge on this left-hand side. Now there's a very characteristic shadow that happens just beneath the bottom edge of the lower lip, and it is the projecting form of that lower lip casting a shadow across the apex of the chin. If you think about light coming in from above the lips, a couple things will become apparent. The upper lip faces downward, away from the light source, lower lip, catches a lot more of that light. When we get below the lower lip, we have another downward facing plane before we get to the light of the upward facing plane of the chin. Now let's analyze our drawing here and see if we find the same thing. We have a lighter roof of the mouth and philtrum here. We have a downward facing plane of the upper lip that's catching less light and therefore is more of a dark half tone or shadow. We have a lower lip that protrudes outward, catching a lot of light and then casting a shadow across the apex of the chin before we get to that high key area at the top of that form. This kind of 3D conceptualizing of a feature where we draw it from one angle and think about it and visualize it from another angle is a great way to understand in depth what the values mean as they're running across this form and how that can help us make a better rendering of the subject. Okay, let's fill in these shadows a little bit and then we'll get into some of the halftone shapes that we're gonna need to see. Now, why don't we get to this big, white, wide open space in the lower lip? And let's talk about where we see the form represented by value. If we look at this left-hand side again, you can see that there is a little shadow shape that sneaks in underneath the outer edge of that central form. It shows us really clearly the volume of the lower lip in that area. And it also shows us how the vermilion cornice kind of sticks up out of that depth as a slightly lighter value. Now, the highlights are broken up by the vertical striations on the lower lip. But if we follow them across, we see that they run right through this central axis and eventually up right here where there is a distinct turn in the shadow edge. That means also that there is a half tone above the highlight that we need to indicate in order to show how that highlighted plane stands out. Then don't forget that vermilion cornice that we find here, the highlight that sits across that, tells us that there must be a half tone value above it. We can indicate some of the half tone that helps the upper lip curl inward here. It does show us a little bit an indication of where that rise in the form sits and how it creates a kind of highlighted edge. Now something I want to mention about these highlights, we notice them most prominently here along that outer third and the edge in between the outer third and the body. 
meaning that the front facing plane of the lower lip is in fact not the brightest plane. I'm going to key that down a little bit to show how it's facing a little bit away from the light. I also get into this really deep, dark half tone, almost a shadow, the outer corner of the mouth. If this winds up feeling like a hard highlighted edge, it is almost a guarantee that your lips are going to feel pasted on. So it merits a bit of extra attention to make sure that we show the way that form turns inward. Why don't we get a little bit into these vertical striations? Every time that I encounter a pattern like this, I try to draw it as a texture meaning that I don't copy exactly the shapes that I see. I just try to study the, the pattern of those shapes and to show with my rendering the essence of that pattern. Whenever you're studying the forms of the face, everything is a transition. The upper lip doesn't have an outline. It's a transition inward. The philtrum is not an outlined shape above the upper lip. It is a transitioning set of planes that each have specific forms, but they're soft forms. At no point do we get to simply add an outline. Everything in our drawing is a transition and it's the speed and clarity of that transition that changes. And when we're able to accurately translate that appearance into two dimensions, that's when we get a really great drawing. That wraps up this lesson on the lips. If you found anything in this video even remotely interesting, just hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and think about going more in-depth with your portraiture studies by subscribing to my Patreon page. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.